Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. Well, today's video, uh, so it's going to take us to the 1st of September. Day 10 is the first day of September. Uh, so we've got very warm weather coming up over the next few days. It's going to be a little bit of a heat wave uh, during the bank holiday weekend. Next week, we're probably looking at a gradual drop in temperature. We're not seeing anything too dramatic at the moment in terms of uh, a fungi breakdown next week. Probably just a slow and gradual drop in the temperature uh, and maybe setting us up then for something a little bit more unsettled as we get through towards month's end. But we'll have a look at the weather for the next uh, week, 10 days in a moment. And then we'll actually be able to extend out beyond that with the uh, Beijing Climate Centre. Uh, and that's going to run to around 40 days. We'll also, of course, have a look at the extended GFS and E7 ensembles running to around a couple of weeks. But we're going to start off in the tropical Atlantic. So yesterday we had tropical storm Chantel in the uh, tropical uh, Atlantic, or actually quite a long way north, just out of the tropical Atlantic, really just here. Now that has gone uh, post-tropical now. Actually, I think it is still tropical, but it's gone from a storm to depression. So it is now, uh, this is at National Hurricane Centre, by the way, it is now tropical depression Chantel, uh, and it's giving maximum sustained winds of 35 miles an hour with a minimum central pressure of 1,010 millibars. It's moving east at around 17 miles an hour. Just clicking on Chantel shows us what's going to happen. So, as I said, the moment it's a tropical depression, so it does still have, uh, it is a tropical area of low pressure at the moment. But as we get through to tomorrow, Friday, it's going post-tropical, post-tropical depression, Chantel, uh, by Ben, sort of meandering around, uh, going nowhere fast. That's where Chantel, post-tropical Chantel, will be uh, sort of late Saturday. There's nothing else beyond that, so I assume that by this point it will pretty much be dissipating, and uh, that will be the end of the rather short-lived tropical storm uh, Chantel. Let's also have a look at this yellow X, which is a disturbance area just here in the Caribbean, see if there's been any developments uh, with that. So it's disturbance one, and it has a 0% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours. So as of 8 a.m. EDT, the National Hurricane Center are saying a trough of low pressure located over central and northwestern Bahamas is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Some slow development is possible by this weekend or early next week while the system moves northwestward towards the Florida Peninsula at 5 to 10 miles an hour, and then, sl and then turns northeastwards off the southeastern coast of the United States. So it's going to go in that sort of direction, uh, by the sound of it, doing something a little bit like that. And around this area, we might see some development through the early part of next week. It has a 0% chance of becoming a tropical storm in the next 48 hours. So no chance that it's going to become a tropical storm in the next 48 hours. In the next five days, it's a 20% chance. So even then, quite low. But of course, we'll keep uh, a close eye on what's happening with Disturbance 1. These are the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts from the Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECMWF here on the top and the GFS, which we'll have a look in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 millibars, 80,000 feet is an area in the atmosphere. High pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. Red and orange extrapolates to above average heights, which is high pressure. Blue to below average heights, which is low pressure. Uh, these are the mean flow charts for the 7 to 10 day time frame. So we can see that with the ECM, we've got an area of below average height sitting to our north and an area of above average height sitting to our south. So this is looking rather westerly as we go into the first week of September. We're bringing in westerly winds. Um, probably a little bit unsettled up in the north. Maybe not too unsettled, though, down in the south. You could envisage some dry weather on off for southern parts of the country. Temperatures coming in from the north Atlantic, probably close to average enough particularly exciting very uh, very average type conditions I would have thought uh, for the uh, beginning of September 
This is uh, the GFS, so uh, again, it's very similar, but there are differences because the uh, area below average heights is quite a lot deeper and further southward. Uh, so we've got a deeper area of below average heights, more or less over top of the country, actually, in the 7 to 10 day time frame, with some above average heights out to the northwest. So actually, this is quite significantly different compared to the uh, ECM. The flow of the jet's going something a little bit like that. Has got a ridge over towards the east, but I think that's rather more unsettled, uh, really rather more unsettled with the uh, GFS compared to uh, to what the ECM is showing. The ECM has more influence from a ridge to ourselves, whereas the GFS does look a little bit more dominated by the trough of the low average heights. Uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks Manchester today. So the red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Manchester. We are a little bit warm on average at the moment. Temperatures are on the up into the bank holiday weekend. We're going to uh, have uh, we're going to have a real push up in the temperature. I think um, on the surface we're going to get to 30 degrees, maybe a bit more down in the southeast over the weekend. So it can be very warm, locally hot for this bank holiday weekend then into next week, we've got a fairly quick drop in temperature taking place now uh, a slide down in the temperature through sort of the middle of next week really cooling things off and at that point it, it starts to turn more unsettled too so lots of dry weather coming up over the next uh five or six days and then beyond that precipitation spikes there associated with the cool down and then beyond that into the first week of september it looks like it turns a little bit more unsettled that's not a particularly wet ensemble though so, uh, I mean, it could turn a little bit more changeable, a little bit more showery, but you wouldn't look at that and say it's overly unsettled by any means. Just cooler and maybe a bit more changeable through the first week of September. Temperature anomalies from the 21st to the 29th of August are significantly warmer than average. It's going to be well above average in the week ahead. And precipitation anomalies from the 21st to the 29th of August are going to be coming out drier than average too. So it's a warmer and drier than average week coming up. Um, a spell of classic late summer weather on the way. And that's how the GFS looks for Sunday. Now, we are pulling up some quite warm air from the south on Sunday, and there is this little uh, sort of uh, trough here, that's particularly over the western part of the country, that might just bring some cloud and showers into western parts of the country. You wouldn't totally rule out chance one or two scattered thunderstorms, but the central east says it looks essentially dry and hot on Sunday. And then mainly dry as we get through into bank holiday Monday too. Uh, lots of fine weather coming up then. Temperature still into the low 30 Celsius, potentially down in the southeast. That's Tuesday. You see the ridge is beginning to weaken just a little bit. And by Wednesday, this is when we start to push cooler air in off the Atlantic. There is a trough associated with this. At the moment, it looks a relatively weak trough. It's not um, forecast, as GFS is not forecasting widespread thunderstorms, but of course it's a way off, it's just under uh, a week away, so we need to keep a close eye on this, there is going to be uh, some pretty warm air, some very warm air actually, and quite humid air ahead of this, so uh, as we transition into something rather cooler on Wednesday, there may, uh, on Wednesday next week, there may be something um, thundery happening, at the moment it looks a low risk, just looks like kind of a band of rain pushes in from the Atlantic, and then cool air follows along behind, but we'll keep a close eye on it. Um, end of next week looks like that. So more and settled up in the north. Low pressure to the north of Scotland bringing in those westerly winds. They bring showers or longer spells of rain to the north. In the south, we're close to this ridge, so there should be a reasonable amount of dry weather down in the south into the second half next week. And then maybe more widely unsettled as we get through to day 10. Of course, day 10 is Sunday the 1st of September. So by then... I think even down in the south, we could be pushing some outbreaks of rain uh, down into the south and the southeastern part of the country. And temperatures uh, will be a lot cooler too. If you follow the isobars back and see that the air is originating up here and moving down into the UK. So I think temperatures will be um, dropping there as we get through to the beginning of September, most definitely. Beyond that, into more extended range, this particular GFS run uh, sort of brings high pressure into the southwest. Northern parts of the country look quite unsettled. That's how we finish up with this particular 
uh, GFS run gets us to Saturday, the 7th of September. Um, so, it looks like it's turning more unsettled with time out in the Atlantic. But this particular GFS run does have quite a lot of dry weather, particularly for southern parts of the country, through the first week of September. GM looks like that. So, pretty hot on uh, Sunday. And those hot conditions lasting into Bank Holiday Monday, too. That's Tuesday. Heat continues down in the south, southeast, starts to turn a little bit more unsettled up to the north and the west. And then through next week again, same idea as the GFS, we start to push in these cooler winds from off the Atlantic. Won't necessarily be particularly a thundery breakdown, just probably a band of showery rain on a cold front moving west to east sometime around middle of next week it's rather sketchy when this is happening but sometime around tuesday to wednesday probably bring about a patchy rain in from the atlantic or showery rain from the atlantic and then the temperature starts to fall away that's how we look at the end of next week friday the 30th of august rather unsettled then low pressure to the northwest of scotland bringing in probably showers or longer spells of rain and into the extended range that's how we're looking at day 10 sunday the 1st of september not quite unsettled, particularly so for northern parts of the country with risk of showers or longer spells of rain up there. ECM is again very warm, uh, potentially quite hot in the east and southeast on Sunday. A very warm conditions last into the early part of next week too. Uh, that's Wednesday. So on Wednesday, it looks like we've got the cold front moving into the north and the west. Even then, still probably very warm down in the southeast corner, but of course turning uh, cooler behind that um, front. By the time you get through to Thursday, the front has pushed through. By that point, uh, the cold front is probably in that sort of position. So by the end of Wednesday, we're all into a cooler and fresher west northwesterly flow. Uh, again, there might be something funny happening on that front, but at the moment it looks a relatively weak uh, front, I have to say. Uh, by the end of next week, this is Friday the 30th of August, high pressure switching back into the south, low pressure up to the north. It's within a cooler air mass now, fresher air mass, but still bringing a lot of dry and pleasant weather down to the southern part of the country. And that's how we look at day 10. So a little bit more influence from high pressure at day 10 uh, with the ECM operational run. We saw it on the height anomaly flow chart compared to the GFS, but Ridge is just about clinging on by uh, its fingertips. And uh, where we would go beyond that would be interesting to see, actually, because we've got low pressure out in the Atlantic. So it's possible we would just flat this ridge off and bring low pressure in. Alternatively, though, we might strengthen the high pressure over the country and start to move it back up to the northeast and semi jet stream north. So that's one of those charts, uh, day 10, that uh, really could go either way. Uh, it's, sort of, uh, it's sort of on a knife edge which way that would go if you could roll on uh, any further which, of course, we can't. But we can have a look at the ECM ensembles. Uh, so these are the options that we've got on the table uh, today at day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. This gets us to the 1st of September, 240 hours away. So we have 22 members of the ECM ensembles with below average heights to our north, above average heights to the south, and also to the west of the country as well. Um, so a little bit unsettled with those, but probably a reasonable amount of dry weather, especially for more southern parts. Of the I mean, it's 14 here, but are definitively very unsettled with a deep, deep trough of low pressure centred over the top of the country and a mid-Atlantic ridge too. Um, so obviously that's going to be very unsettled uh, scenario for the 1st of September with that one. We have 11, uh, let's change the colour, we have 11 that have uh, a ridge a little bit further away from us in the North Atlantic, chop of low pressure, quite weak one over Scandinavia. Um, so, reasonable amount of dry weather on offer with those, which you would have thought. That does include the operational and the control ECM run. And then we have four with above average heights, high pressure then to our east, below average heights to our west. That could be the warmest option, actually. That could be bring winds up from the south, but it could be a little bit volatile. Maybe hints of a bit of thunder uh, with that one. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. So, we have 19, and this gets us to the 6th of September, by the way. Again, towards the end of the first week of September, 
we have uh, we have 19 members in two weeks time of the East Hill Ensembles looking very unsettled low pressure centred over top of the country uh, that's going to be the most unsettled option 17 with above average heights to the south and the west below average heights up to the north east that could bring a reasonable amount of dry weather to many parts of the country and then 15 with um, northern blocking high pressure away to our north but also extending a reach down into the west of Europe so again that could be a reasonably dry scenario too so the idea a couple of days ago is that the first week of September was probably going to be very unsettled um now just not quite as clear cut about that actually reading between the lines with all of this it could be that high pressure could be a little bit more influential through that first week of September than we may have thought uh, a couple of days ago we shall see Fun just having a look at the charts for Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. So these are 500 millibar heights broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period will take us from the 21st to the 30th of August, becoming 10 days or settled with above average heights from the Atlantic through the UK and into Europe as well. Jet streams push north, so lots of draw, uh, warm, dry weather on offer in the next 10 days. This is days uh, 11 through to, um, it can be days 11 through to 20, uh, the 31st of August to the 9th of September. So essentially the first 10 days of September. And this is looking rather unsettled. So it's all a little bit confused, actually. It's a quite a confused picture for early September. This looks more like what we were expecting a couple of days ago with high pressure pushed out to the north and west and then a trough of low pressure over and to the south of the country that would be unsettled you'd expect quite a bit of wet weather to be coming through with that and probably quite cool as well i think we would be going on the cool side of the jet with that also uh, the next 10 day period is going to be days 21 to 30, taking us from the 10th through to the 19th of September. Uh, high pressure to our north, bit of northern blocking around Iceland. Low pressure is to the south. Again, probably quite cool and unsettled with that, uh, if anything. The high pressure is extending over towards Scandinavia as well. So probably bringing in the wing sort of east south east So maybe uh, relatively warm, actually, with the wing direction. But again, could be rather unsettled, I would have thought. And then the final 10-day period is days 31 to 40. It takes us from the 20th, 29th of September. So pretty much to the end of September. And with this one, it looks like we've got a mid-Atlantic ridge above average heights extending through the Atlantic uh, to Greenland with a trough of low pressure over and to the east of the country. That could still be quite unsettled, but with that, we could be putting in some quite cool air from the north. So the Beijing Climate Centre, and I think when we looked at this last week, the Beijing Climate Centre was going for quite a warm, dry September. It has changed its ideas on that quite significantly I think, and is now actually looking quite cool and unsettled. Maybe not cool in the first half, but relatively changeable in the first half. And then getting cooler and definitely autumnal, I would have thought, by that final 10-day period. Bear in mind, that's up to 40 days away, so it's a long way out. But it's a bit of a shift from the Beijing Climate Centre that's happened over the past week since we last looked at it last week. Um, it's definitely looking cooler and more unsettled than it was last week. So we shall see where that's going. It does seem to be quite a confused picture as early as the first week of September. As I always explain, September is a very, very difficult month to forecast for. And the reason for that is usually down to tropical storms in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. The models always have a nightmare uh, forecasting where those storms and areas of low pressure are going to go. Sometimes they make it hurricanes, of course. Forecasting where those goes, uh, where those storms are going to go, is always a nightmare for the models. And so model reliability tends to drop a lot through September and sometimes into October. But a definite shift from the Beijing Climate Centre from last week's warm and dry ideas for September to this week's uh, cool and more unsettled or unsettled and eventually cooler ideas for September. We shall see what's happening with that. Definitely in the next few days we're going to get a uh, we're going to get a spell of uh, late summer heat and dry weather. So if that's the kind of thing you like at, uh, at the end of the summer then make the most of the next few days. Next week cooling down the first half of the week Monday, Tuesday 
looks pretty warm. Wednesday starts to introduce cooler air from the north and the west, and that cooler air could introduce something a little bit more unsettled by the second half of next week. That's how it's looking today. But uh, as ever, we should keep you posted on all of the developments over the next few days. Uh, right, so that's it for your video uh, for today. Only one video up today. Um, tomorrow we've got Jamie Friday. We'll have a week to 10-day video update. And we'll have a final update, uh, final look, I suppose, at uh, the late summer bank holiday weekend. Uh, but that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.